Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and that is the ultimate SUV replacement. That is the 2023 Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition. And in this video, I'm gonna take you on a quick tour of what makes it so special. First thing is first, I wanna give a huge thank you to Pelche Subaru here in Tyler, Texas. Jeremy Jones and the whole team have been absolutely spectacular in allowing me to show this one off to you today. In fact, they gave us our last Subaru Outback Wilderness to test off-road here in East Texas at Barnwell Mountain. And this one is just a nice refresher, but I will link to that original off-road video if you're watching this on YouTube up in the corner. But uh, first thing, starting under the hood, we have a 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder boxer engine. And you can see there is a lot of cooling going on to get air into the top of this to help cool it off and help it breathe, help it do its turbocharged thing. And I think this is one of the better applications of the Boxer engine in Subaru's lineup. I've really enjoyed this powertrain combo, even though this one is mated to a CVT or continuously variable transmission with eight fake gears. It is, again, one of the better interpretations of a CVT that I've driven. And this does, yes, have Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive. And closing the hood, we get to take in the beauty of the 2023 Subaru Outback Wilderness. And I have to specify that this is the Wilderness trim because all non-Wilderness models got a little bit of an update to the front fascia for the 2023 model year, just to look a little more cohesive with some other models in their lineup. But this 2023 Wilderness Edition Outback carries on with the same styling from previous years. We'll start up here on the hood. This matte black graphic is to help alleviate glare on the hood when you're out on the trails and does a good job taking up the largest portion of the raised center section of that hood. And I can speak from experience. Yes, it does remove glare from the center part of the hood when you're out wheeling off-road. Moving down, you can see there is a lot of black plastic cladding up front here, and that goes to its rugged ability, and the fact that this one sits up with 9.5 inches of ground clearance. For reference, like the Mac Daddy of all midsize off-road vehicles is the Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. That one has 9.6 inches of ground clearance, so this one is right there with it. This one also has all-wheel drive, and this one has got a much more modern powertrain to make it a more livable vehicle day in and day out. This is definitely much more comfortable than that Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro, and I can say that from experience because we had this out next to it out at Barnwell Mountain when we did take this one off-road. So I, I can say with full authority, this would be a great replacement for that. Unless you're doing some crazy serious rock crawling and off-roading, this thing is truly capable. Moving around to the side, you get more aggressive black cladding on the, the front fender, the rear fender. You get these black wheels wrapped in Yokohama Geolander AT tires. They are 225-65 are 17 inch tires wrapped around these black uh, wilderness specific wheels. I like them okay. I, I would say from our experience off-roading in this, I would probably upgrade the tires first and foremost if you wanted a quote unquote cheap upgrade to make this thing even more capable, but very capable vehicle in its own right. Moving to the side, you can see it does sit higher than a typical outback wood um, and that's because of that increased 9.5 total inches of ground clearance it sits up nice and high feels much more like an suv than some quote unquote suvs do nowadays this really does um, look the part and uh, again to keep referencing our old video it does play the part fairly well 
You will see that the bronze accents on this vehicle denote that it is part of the Outback Wilderness family. There is also a Forester Wilderness that gets the same bronze accents and treatments. And yes, a Super Wilderness badge here on the door. Moving around to the back, again, very handsome look back here. A lot of black plastic cladding. Again, if you're going up and down, you're worried about your uh, approach and departure angle. And again, wheeling in the red dirt of East Texas, uh, you don't want to mess up your paint. So black plastic here, but you do have dual exit exhaust down below. And you can see the bronze uh, points are actually almost pointing directly down to it. But I like it. It's a nice look. It, it's probably not my favorite look. Um, it, there is a lot of black plastic on this one, but I do like the blacked out badging here on the back. And that wilderness badge does look pretty cool, if I do say so myself. Popping open the rear hatch and looking at the rear cargo compartment. This is quite a large rear cargo compartment. You can see this is our full size bit of luggage and it fits in here with room to spare, uh, long ways sticking out like this. So you can imagine, yeah, you can fit a lot of luggage back here. And this one does come with an aftermarket, well, a factory, but dealer installed uh, protective cover here on the carpeted floor underneath here. That is where your spare tire is. And if you look very carefully, it does look to be a Geolander as well. So Subaru is not leaving you high and dry if something happens out on the trail there. This is a 60-40 split bench rear seat, and you can actually flip and fold the seats from back here in the back of the cargo compartment. So if you're wanting to load something really big, you can absolutely absolutely do that from here. Got a little tongue tied. And then I like this dual position sunshade. So there is your typical lower position. Most uh, retractable sunshades do that. But you can see there is a track here that allows you to store it in a more upright position. So if you have something a little bit taller back here and need just a little bit more room, you've got that second position there on the sunshade. It's a nice little benefit. And then to get it off, you've got to follow those tracks back down. But there you go. And then close the power hatch. Very nice cargo compartment back there. But uh, let's take a look on the inside. Before we get inside, I did want to show you the key. Typical Subaru key. Subaru button here in the middle uh, to unlock. Button right here to lock. And then your hatch release down below that. But yes, the Subaru logo is actually the unlock. Or you can simply come up to it with the key in your pocket, touch the back of the door handle and unlock it. Or the panel right there, you can see those two little lines to lock it. But we will unlock and hop inside. And you can see the black continues, as does the bronze accenting here inside the Subaru Outback Wilderness. Very nice sounding door when you close it. We'll start here on the door panel. So a lot of interesting looks and textures, materials going on here. We've got a little bit of textured plastic here, a little bit of injection molded here. That's a little on the firmer side, but still nice and soft. And then your StarTex material here with your Subaru, new, Subaru Wilderness tag uh, sewn in the, right there. Interesting that that is not bronze stitching. That is typical black stitching, but we'll get more into that here in just a little bit. Moving over to, let's look at the door panel first. Auto uh, windows all the way around, your mirror controls and your window lockout. Your door handle is very nice. It is black plastic, not shiny. And then you get controls here for your hatch and your brightness control for your screens back behind uh, the steering wheel, your gauges, AC vent over here, and then a very large Starlink system that we're actually gonna go ahead and fire this beast up. So again, this is loaned to me for a quick review from Pelche Subaru here in Tyler, Texas. So I'm leaving all of the plastic on this one and leaving it as I found it when they gave it to me. Again, we took one of these off-road and had a little bit of fun with it. So if you want a little bit more 
go check that out. But vertically integrated Starlink system, it's pretty good. Uh, it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I won't get too into that just because I don't have too much time with it. You get bronze accenting around the gauges. You get a little bit of a uh, information screen here that is, well, rather dated. It is... Um, looks a lot like my 2013 Chevy Cruze. I'll just put it that way. It, it does look a little dated, but it wouldn't keep me from buying this car. I already told you, I really like it. Steering wheel is nice, fake leather, leather wrapped. I don't believe this is real leather, but you do get some of the bronze stitching and the bronze here. Get all the controls, almost too many controls for your radio and your driver assistance tech. You do get plastic paddles for the CVT. I did mention it has an eight speed simulation in, built into it. So there is that. Put it in reverse. You can see the backup camera with trajectory and it, it's a little on the dated side, but that's okay. It does a good job. It lets you see what is back behind you. Uh, there is a camera button here that allows you to access the cameras. So this is actually looking out the front of the vehicle, push it again, and it takes you back. So this little camera view button will help you out on the trail a little bit to avoid obstacles, but because it is so wide and the resolution is so low, I would not count on that as my only spotter. I would have someone out there spotting the trail with you. And then we have our electronic parking brake down here. And I did notice when I pushed this camera view button, that's when X mode comes up. So we've got snow and dirt, normal, and then deep snow and mud. That changes uh, drive modes, shift points, throttle mapping, a lot of different things here on this Subaru uh, symmetrical all-wheel drive system, but just to keep you moving. Snow and dirt, uh, I do believe limits uh, wheel slip, but deep snow and mud keeps those wheels spinning. The thought process is you want to keep moving in deep snow and mud versus snow and dirt, uh, not so much. So. That's the thought process there. Moving over here, we've got a little bit of padded and rubberized storage up top and a nice glove box underneath. Storage in the doors and then these StarTex seats. So fake leather, not real leather. They are really nice. They feel very soft, nice texture, kind of a honeycomb pattern here on the side and the Subaru embossed uh, wilderness badge here on the headrest. Two cup holders side by side, a dual level center console that can be opened much like in some Jeep products, uh, much like the Jeep that we own. And then uh, while we're talking about the seat, they are heated, uh, but not ventilated. But let's take a look at the back seat and see what that is like. So getting in the back seat behind myself at 510 and my normal driving position, you can see there is plenty of room back here and very comfortable back seat all the way around. The floor is nice and low. The seat sits up high. My knees feel like they are in a normal seating position and I am doing quite well on room back here when it comes to headroom as well. So plenty of room back here in the back. I don't know if you notice, it did get a little dark back here because the Outback Wilderness only has a standard sunroof, so no big sunroof, and I already mentioned all the black that is back here, but you can see same pattern texture here on the back seats, and do we get a full down center armrest? We do, with two side-by-side -side cup holders. Very nice there. And while we're talking about the seats, I'll show you right here, this is the recline, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it here and it actually goes back quite a bit so I can get very comfortable. This would make a very good road trip rig and a very good off-road rig. It's comfortable in both situations. So we had some high-speed fun with it again when we took it off-road earlier uh, in our channel's history but all around a very comfortable vehicle back here in the back. Storage options include dual map pockets back here in the back with a phone pocket. I really like that. You can see it's sewn in just to be a little bit smaller. You can get that on both the driver and front passenger. USB-A and USB-C back here and two level heated outboard seats back here on the back. Very nice and yes, even a automatic roll down rear window in this one. So all around a very nice vehicle. 
very well put together. I would buy one of these in a heartbeat if I were in the market because it really does all the on-road stuff very well and really surprised us when it came to the off-road stuff. Again, a huge thanks to Jeremy Jones and the team at Pelche Subaru here in Tyler, Texas. Link down in the description to their website so you can check out everything that they have. If you want to see more from us as we do a month long of daily new video posts, be sure and hit all the buttons down below. Subscribe, follow, ring the bell, all that good stuff. And find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Everything is at GT Garage Talk or you can just head to gtgaragetalk.com. I'm not going to drive this one because I've already done that. So until next time, gearheads, bye.